This is your bow tutorial. If you grabbed a bow making kit from me at the high school, you either got a ribbon this size, this is 1.5, or a ribbon this size, this is number three. The technique is the same. If you're getting your own supplies, I'm hoping you got something similar. Um, I kind of describe it, this is my pinky, this is my thumb somewhere in between those two sizes. Anything bigger than this, there's lots of cool options, but those are more for big, big arrangements, like think a door wreath, or even packaging a present. We're doing vase arrangements. They're smaller, they're on the table, and remember the bow is a support to the arrangement. It is not the star of the show, the flowers are. So we don't wanna overpower it. So somewhere in the size range of those two. The other requirements for the ribbon is we want it to be a one-sided satin. What that means, you can see the sheen, the, the glossiness to this on this side, but then this side, it doesn't exist. It is matte, it is dull. Um, and you can even, if you have it with you, feel it. This side is a little bit more rough. This side is definitely very smooth. So we want a one-sided satin ribbon. It's also not wired. I know you can find those at like the craft stores where the edges have wire. Those are helpful, but not really for the arrangements we're gonna do in this beginning class. That's much more used in an advanced level for bigger arrangements. And again, for larger ticket items like a door wreath or big scale arrangements for weddings and funerals. So we're gonna start small. Our first arrangement is next week. And we're gonna work with bows of this size. So I'm gonna demonstrate for you um, first using the small one, but then I will show you the big one. Supply wise, we're gonna cut this off of our ribbon base today. And what I would like you to do is pull out enough ribbon to be a wingspan. Your arms spread straight out from your body. We wanna hold the ribbon in one of those hands and we wanna be able to cut it where the other hand is. So usually your wingspan is as tall as you are. So this piece should be fairly large. We're talking in the three and a half to four feet at least, okay? So a wingspan, fingertip to fingertip. Okay. So just to show you how much I'm using, that's my wingspan. And then before we get started, you also need to make a separate cut of the same ribbon. This is a piece we use, we call it the tails. And so I want you to take your hand and from the base of your hand to your fingertip. That section's about three and a half, four inches. This is your piece for tails. So a wingspan, a piece for tails, and then a piece of wire. If you got it from me, I've already pre-cut it for you to the correct length. If you're working off a roll or a paddle of wire, you're gonna need to cut it. It is just slightly bigger than our piece for tails. It's about four to five inches. And those are all the supplies you're gonna need. Wingspan, tail, wire. All right, we're gonna get started today with our wingspan piece. The bulk of our bow is made out of this material. The tail and the wire are used to finish it off and to actually make it a usable piece in the arrangement. So you're gonna wanna start with one of your ends. It doesn't matter, mine's a little goofy, that's fine. But we want to always be looking at the shiny side, not the dull side. So find the shiny side and find an end. And then find what hand works comfortable for you. You're gonna be holding in one hand and moving, working with the other. Some people prefer to do the working with their dominant hand. Some people like to hold it because they feel more secure. Whatever works for you, they just can't both do the same jobs. So I am right-handed. I like to hold in my right hand and work with my left, but try it both ways and find what's comfortable for you. To get started, I'm gonna place it in my holding hand. Again, the shiny side facing up and I want just a little bit of the end sticking out. If I hold the end within my fingertips, I don't see it. When I finish it off, it's very, very close to um, 
the cutoff point and it could easily fall out and then all my work has been for nothing. So we don't want that, we want it to be secure so we want just a little bit hanging out the bottom. My holding hand here has three fingers only, the thumb in the front, the pointer and the middle finger and the back. The other two, I'm just gonna keep them out of the way. That's probably the first hard part to learn. Sometimes we have too many things going on and things get transferred back and forth and then it all falls apart. So really try to eliminate the too many cooks in the kitchen situation and just have thumb, pointer, and middle finger. I call this the claw. So hold your material in the claw. Then we're gonna use this hand to maneuver our extra ribbon around to create our bow. So we are gonna go up and back to the claw, and then we will go down and back to the claw. We're doing a figure eight motion. So we're gonna go up to the back, back to the claw. We're gonna go down, out, back to the claw. Figure eight. Up and back, out and back, up and back out and back. As we do that, when I'm looking at it from the front, I always want shiny side facing me, the complete thing. So if I start with our first loop, I'm gonna go up, out, back to the claw. I'm gonna do a quick shove it in there. I'm not releasing the whole thing, but I'm making room to get it in there. I would then be going down and back to the claw. But you'll notice as I'm figure eighting that this now is on the wrong side. I want it shiny. It's not matching right now because we did that figure eight motion. So every time we come into the claw, before we move on to our next loop, you're going to have to twist to the other side, our working ribbon only. This is perfectly fine. We're not gonna twist this. This is the part that is wrong. So we're going to twist and make sure it stays. So when I do that twist, I am doing it up here in my fingertips so that it can hold it. That's why we have two there. These two are not gonna move. They are secure. They are holding this upper loop because it is perfect. It is done and I don't wanna lose my progress. My bottom finger, my middle finger though, it can let go and not lose this. So if you want to, you can lift that finger up out of the way do your twist and put your finger back down. These two should be able to touch your thumb. If you've got a really skinny thumb, then they might overhang a little bit and you have to figure it out. All right, we have a top loop. We now did the twist, so we have shiny ribbon. We're now ready. We're gonna go down, out, to the back, into the claw. Shiny, shiny from the front, and we're seeing that figure eight shape take place. All right, we're ready to go up again. We're always gonna work our way back. So we're gonna move, the next loop's gonna be behind this one, always working away from ourselves. So this next loop, I need to again, change the ribbon because it's on the wrong side. So I'm holding with these two fingers. This one can lift up, I can twist, and I can put that finger back down. Now, it is on the correct shiny side, they match. And I'm gonna go behind this loop, but again, I wanna make the sizes as similarly as possible. So I'm gonna take this up, out, to the back, into my claw. They match, they're behind each other. I'm gonna lift up my bottom finger, twist it to the correct side, put it down. I'm now ready to do a bottom loop behind the first one. Bottom is gonna go down to the back, into the claw behind the first loop. And then I'm just gonna keep repeating this until I run out of my wingspan of ribbon for the next step. This is just building the base of the bow, always building behind and away from ourselves. When you get to the end, if you don't have enough to make a complete loop and get it into the claw, you're just gonna let it be and we will trim it with scissors. We wanna make sure our loops are the same size. So to do all that work and then have a really tiny one, we'll throw the look of the bow off. All right, so I'm gonna finish this off and then I'll show you how to do the next step.
I'm gonna stop there because this is definitely not going to make a loop, so I'm gonna let that be. But that's what I what it looks like from the front right now. I have a top, I have a bottom set of loops. They're all behind each other. And I have a pretty good amount. I have five loops on each side. Four to five and more is our goal. Anything less than four is not gonna look very good when we finish it off, and you'll see why in just a second. So this is our base. Our next step involves adding the tail. So right now we've been building our bow up and down. I now want you to take it side to side, kind of like a little bow tie, side to side. We're gonna add our piece for tails to our bow at the bottom of it so it goes with the bow. So I'm not gonna put it like this. I'm not gonna go on top. I wanna go on the bottom shiny side up so it matches and I want to center it and shove it in so it becomes a part of this bow. Try to center it as best you can so it hangs down. Our next step is going to be to use the wire. The wire is going to replace our claw so that our fingers can stop cramping and that will be our final step before we fluff it out and actually put it into an arrangement. So our tails went lengthwise with the bow, but our claw is stuck here in the center, kind of going the opposite direction. So I want you to think about that as you add the wire. The wire, we're gonna add to the top. And we're gonna add this way against the rest of the bow opposite. This was added to the bottom with the bow. This is to the top against the bow. So you're gonna center it underneath your thumb and then you're going to push it down and around all of the ribbon material. It is now giving a hug to all of the ribbon, including the tail. See that? It's around all of that. Now, if I let go right now, it's gonna all fall apart because this wire is not secured yet to it. So we've got it around it. Now we need to actually tie it off so it's secure. Wire is bendable. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to twist the wire, you can see there, right there, um, tightly to it. Think of like if you have one of those old school like bread bag ties where you have to twist it and not just put the little cap thing on it. That's what we're doing here. I find the easiest way to do this, I'm gonna switch hands, is to hold the wire in one hand. I like to use my dominant hand, which is why I swapped and the ribbon in the other. And you should be able, once you've bent this back, you should be able to grab the ribbon like I am now and pull away. And then with this hand, I can pull. I've got some tension there. And now I can use my, my two fingers, my thumb and my pointer, like a pair of pliers. And I can twist really tight up here. You ladies with fake nails, sometimes that's hard. Sometimes the nails are beneficial because you can really get tight. Either way, the goal is to be super tight. When I pull this away from each other, you can see a slight gap, but it is not very big. Look at, that's my pinky finger right there. It's not very big at all. If this gap is big enough to shove a pen or a pencil through, it is too loose. Because when I let go, this stuff will fall out. But right now, it's not going anywhere. I'm tugging on it, it's, it's not leaving. So this tightness, how you do that twisting, you should be able, you're never not gonna have zero gap. It's just practically impossible unless you're using a machine, but that gap should be small enough that you can't get a pencil through it. All right, so now your fingers can stop cramping because you've successfully tied off your bow and this is what it looks like. And our very last step, it's a very technical term, I call it fluffing the bow. And then we would use this wire to put it into an arrangement, just like a stem into a vase and you'll see that in our first arrangement. So fluffing is your last step as we're practicing bows. Here's what I mean by that. We built it up and down. We then twisted it side to side like a bow tie so that we could add the tails. So either way we're looking at it right now, it's very linear. You can see just a line. A bow should look circular like a pom-pom. So we wanna transform this line into a circle. And we don't want it to be 3D because we don't care about this bottom part of it because in an arrangement, we wouldn't see that. It's all gonna be up top. So I want you to think of like, if this was the ground, this is the Tacoma Dome. But the Tacoma Dome is not just a rainbow arch. It is a actual round dome that you can go into and watch a concert or a sporting event. So we need to turn this rainbow arch 
and we need some over here and some over here and turn it into that dome shape. So how are you gonna do that? You're gonna pull on these loops and you're gonna maneuver them into those zones until it looks more circular. So it's already going. So when you're tugging on these, I am tugging from underneath and in. I am not grabbing it and pinching it. I'll show you what happens. If you grab, pinch, and pull, yes, you will move it into its spot, but that crease then becomes permanent. And the only way you can get that look out is by using like a flat iron. So we don't wanna do that because then that shows. And if you do it to all of them, it really does start to look funky. So tug from underneath and just pull, don't pinch. And you're just gonna keep tugging until you like the way it looks. Sometimes you tug on like two things and it just magically looks like the perfect pom-pom bow. Other times I'll sit here and keep tugging for like two minutes and then I give up because for me, it's easier if I don't like it to just make a new one than to keep fighting it. Cause sometimes it's just a matter of luck. Like it's just a, a twisting nightmare. All right, so I'm gonna call that good. I've got a circular thing going on. I still have a little bit of a gap there. It's not perfectly symmetrical, um, but I can keep playing with it or I can make another one. My tips and tricks for you, this will look better. This end result will look better the more loops overall you have because then you have more taking up volume of space. So if you're really struggling and time after time they look like this and you get frustrated with these gaps, you just need to take a bigger wingspan piece so that you can make more loops. Also, we didn't really talk about the size of the loops today. I just started doing it. The size of the loops will impact the overall size of this bow. And that matters when we're talking about what's its purpose. What arrangement is it going into? Right now, you guys are just practicing to get technique down. But if we were to make a uh, table center piece compared to something that goes on the body, like a, a boutonniere for a guy for prom. This bow would be good for centerpiece. This is not something that would look good on the chest of a guy, especially a short, skinny one. Um, so you gotta think about proportion. So just to get us rolling, work on whatever size is comfortable for you because I want you to have success in creating. And then we can kind of modify size once you get the technique down. Um, based on the arrangement. Okay. There's how to make a bow.